Warning, this video might get a bit spicy, it might get a bit dark, and I cannot guarantee that you won't be offended. You have been warned. Hello, friends. So I haven't felt the need to explain why I don't want children in years. I'm 40-ish, I'm closing in on menopause, and it's probably been about 10 years since I really felt the need to justify why I don't want kids. When I was in my 20s and my friends were starting families and I was dating men, I felt a constant need to explain myself. But since then, it's really been a non-issue. Until in the last year or so that I've gotten more involved in the feminism community. Um, I've started to feel a pressure to justify my position again. When I listen to women in feminist groups, talk about how we women as magic mamas should utilize our fertility as our greatest source of empowerment, I find myself totally disagreeing and having to justify why I think differently. And the way that I think is very uncommon. And let's take a look at how uncommon it is. Women who consistently never expect to have children or never want to have children throughout their lives are only about 1% of the population. It is that small of a number. Historically, about 85% of American women have children. Another 14% want children at some point, but don't have them. So those 14% are women who put it off until it's too late, can't find a man, have career priorities, can't afford it, are infertile, or they initially want children and then change their mind later in life. So you have 99% of women either have children or want children at some point, and 1% never want kids. Yes, it is that rare, and I am one of those outliers. I've never wanted children. I have no idea what it means when a woman says she wants to be a mother. I have never felt that instinct or drive. I can only imagine it's real because I've never experienced it. I believe women when they say they want kids, but I have no clue firsthand what that feels like. But I've got a few eggs left, so maybe I'll change my mind. But I really can't see that happening, and I'll tell you why. And once again, you've been warned. Spicy is on the menu today, so if you don't like it spicy, turn back now. Also, my intention with this video is not to offend anyone, but to give representation to a viewpoint that is rarely expressed. My reasons are my reasons. They are not a personal attack on anyone. Do you, and please let me do me. If you're interested in this topic, I would highly recommend the Wikipedia article on voluntary childlessness. It lists so many reasons why people choose to not have kids and they're all so good. <laughs> For this video, I just sat down and jotted down the first 10 things that came to my mind. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. But there are certainly many more reasons than these. Reason number one is that I just don't want to and that's enough of a reason in and of itself. Not having children is shockingly a woman's default bodily state. Pause and think about that. Not having children is a non-action and therefore doesn't require justification. Actions require justification and in general, non-actions do not. I don't owe children to anyone. I'm not failing to fulfill a societal role if I don't have them. Reason number two is that the near future for our species is not looking great. Climate change, pollution, overpopulation, the overstressed power grid, exploding cancer rates, rivers full of plastic, internet dopamine addictions, postmodern neoliberal fascism, conservative fascism, the monopolization of the global food supply, and the reckoning that's coming when wealth inequality reaches the breaking point. It's strange to me that people just kind of ignore all that. Maybe I've just seen Koi Anaskazi one too many times and it's made me into a doomer. I don't know. I'm actually a very cheerful person day to day, but I'm also on board with Nietzsche who said, to live is to suffer. He didn't have kids either. I live for today and I try to extract as much joy from life as I can because tomorrow's not looking amazing. And to me, it feels too risky to bring a human into that. 
Reason number three is that I just straight up don't like children. Women who don't think kids are cute or don't feel nurturing towards them are kind of seen as or they're portrayed as selfish or monsters or witches. Uh, but I don't think I'm any of those things. I just don't like kids. One thing is that I'm used to communicating at an adult level. I don't like adjusting my communication style to a child level. Uh, children tend to be loud and I'm very sensitive to sensory stimulation. I'm also squeamish. I have a condition where I faint pretty often. And one of my triggers is anything gross like blood or body fluids. I'm very sensitive to that stuff and I think it's very hard to get away from that if you have children. Reason number four is the cost. I am able to financially support myself. That's a level of responsibility that I'm comfortable with and I wouldn't want the pressure of having to make a certain income to provide for a child. And the average cost in the US to raise a child from birth to age 18 is over $230,000. So I'm good. Reason number five is time, energy, and flexibility. If I had a child, I would have less time to pursue my own passions. I'm a person who has kind of limited energy and I sometimes feel that just working, exercising, and hobbies are more than enough for me already. So I don't know where the time and energy to raise a child would come from. I also like having the flexibility to be able to say, go for a hike or go grocery shopping without having to dress, feed, and manage another human being. Reason number six is pregnancy. Oh boy, where do I start? Uh, well, first of all, I have PCOS. I don't ovulate regularly and I've had fibroids and I've been told it would be next to impossible to even get pregnant. So the rigmarole of having my own biological children, I can't imagine going through with that. And there's the unpleasantness of pregnancy. Hormonal changes, morning sickness, weight gain, heartburn, swelling, all the risks of illness and injury, the way it changes your body, episiotomy, tearing, heavy bleeding, mastitis, postpartum depression. No, thank you. I heard a crazy statistic about pregnancy. Maybe some of you all know this, but the leading cause of death in pregnant women in the US is murder. 20% of deaths in pregnant women are homicides. Wild, right? Let's also not forget that the US has the worst maternal mortality rate and the worst access to maternal health care of any industrialized nation. We put so much pressure on women to have children and then don't support pregnant women and new mothers, which is shameful. Reason number seven is minimalism. I'm a minimalist. I try to live my life with as few material possessions as possible. And kids require constantly buying things and owning and storing a lot of stuff, which I just find super stressful. I really dislike shopping and consumption and I try to minimize that. And the aesthetic of colorful plastic toys is very grating to me. If I'm not already in trouble at this point, reason number eight might get me there. But from a feminist perspective, I wouldn't want to have a son because I wouldn't want to contribute a member to the oppressor class. And I don't believe in the idea that you can intentionally raise a feminist son or a good one or something. I think that's a fantasy. The truth is you have very little control over how your son comes out, how he grows up to interact with women, and you could unwittingly raise an abuser, a porn addict, a misogynist. It happens all the time. Where do you think they come from? They come from kind, hopeful, feminist mothers who put the effort in and think their son will be different, but their sons don't come out differently. I actually think the idea of socialization is really harmful because it blames mothers when sons come out badly. It puts the responsibility for men's actions onto the women who raise them. It's amazing how many feminists believe in that idea, when to me it's actually a very anti-feminist idea. 
there's no guaranteed way to socialize males to be a certain way. Reason number nine is the flip side of that coin. I wouldn't want to have a daughter. Nietzsche said to live is to suffer, but he didn't live one day as a woman. So he really had no idea the depth of suffering that it is to live in a society where you are not even seen as human. And our society is getting much worse with respect to how we view women's humanity. As long as patriarchy reigns, I feel it's cruel and inhumane to bring a daughter into this world. Reason number 10 is that it takes a man to have a child and I don't want to be attached to a man in any way. And even if your child's father isn't actively in your life, you are still connected to a man because your child has a father. So those are just a few of my reasons. I expect not many people will understand my perspective, but if you're still here, you've taken the time to see things from my viewpoint, and I humbly appreciate that. I know my way of thinking is unusual, but I also know I'm not alone, and I hope by speaking on this, I'm giving some representation to women who agree with the points that I've made. So thanks for listening, and I will see you all in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye.